Hello and welcome to Math Blossoms where growing in mathematics is natural. Today's lesson topic is scientific notation, adding and subtracting. Let's get prepared. We're going to need a pencil with an eraser, some paper to take notes, and an optional calculator for self-checking. Don't forget to pause the video from time to time to answer any practice questions that come up and rewind the video if you need to review anything before trying to answer the questions. Hi. So before we do our vocabulary, I'm Miss G and I like to start all of our lessons off with some uh, deep breathing exercises. So we're going to breathe in our nose, we're going to breathe out our mouth, we're going to hold it in for a count of three. We're going to do this three times. Uh, in the process, let's try to remove all those thoughts that might be getting in the way of our learning math today. And um, Try to forget things that might be distracting us, okay? So let's go ahead and breathe in our nose. Hold it for one, two, three, then breathe out. Okay, breathe in our nose. Hold it for one, two, three, and breathe out. Okay, one more time, breathe in our nose. Hold it for one, two, three, then breathe out. And if you need to do additional breaths, that's fine. Uh, or at any time, if you feel overwhelmed or if, you know, little brother comes in the room and disrupts you or, you know, something like that, just stop, take some more breaths, get refocused, and then uh, continue to do the lesson. Okay. All right. So our vocabulary, um, before we start, let's go over this um, awesome uh, quote here by John Adams, our uh, first vice president in the second uh, U.S. president of the United States. He said, um, I study politics and war so that my sons may have the liberty to study mathematics and philosophy. So again, you know, we have this luxury right now of studying math and philosophy that a lot of people in the past did not have the luxury of doing because they were so involved in other things. So, um, so you know, keep that in mind when you're learning math that, you know, people in the past uh, they recognize the importance of it, and um, and you should too. Uh, and over time, it'll start to grow on you. Um, I remember when I was in middle school, uh, math was not my favorite subject either. But uh, as I got older, I realized how important and how wonderful it was, and it just kind of grew on me. Okay, so scientific notation is when we take numbers that are in expanded form and we make them smaller or uh, we, uh, so that we can work with them. So it's a way to represent very large numbers that have a lot of digits or very small numbers that have a lot of digits and uh, convert them into a more workable, smaller uh, term. And then exponents are those little numbers we put next to big numbers that tell us how many times to multiply that number times itself. Powers are what we call exponents. When we're um, saying them, uh, we would say something like, four to the eighth power. Well, that's telling me that the exponent's eight. So it's interchangeably used with exponent. And then base 10, that is um, what we use in scientific notation. Remember the base is the number that the exponent's attached to. And base 10 is what we use often in scientific notation uh, because um, in proper scientific notation, we are using tens as our uh, base to move decimal points and to get rid of some of those digits. Uh, coefficients, uh, two uh, ways we can talk about coefficients. Uh, if you've watched the equations videos, you would know that a coefficient is just a number being multiplied times a variable. But in scientific notation, the coefficient is the number that's being multiplied times our base 10. Okay, so each scientific notation number has a coefficient and then a base 10. They're both being multiplied together. Expanded form is the number written out with all of its digits. Uh, even if it's, you know, 100 digits long, expanded form means we would write all of those 100 digits out. And then convert is just another way of saying change. So we use the word convert or conversion when we change a number from uh, expanded form into scientific notation or the other way around when we're changing a scientific notation uh, number into expanded form. A decimal point is that number that separates our whole numbers on the left of the decimal from our partial numbers, which are usually less than one on the right side of the decimal. And then the negative, summative, or excuse me, negative and positive, uh, sum and difference, negative and positive. We're going to be working with those integers, whole numbers. 
Uh, negative means numbers less than zero. Positive is numbers greater than zero. And then the sum is what we get when we add numbers together, okay? And then difference is what we get when we subtract numbers, okay? And since we're doing um, scientific notation, adding and subtracting today, we, we're, we're going to be finding sums and differences today, okay? All right, so our lesson essential questions. The first one is how do you add numbers that are in scientific notation without having to convert it to expanded form first? How do you subtract numbers that are in scientific notation without having to convert it to expanded form first? And how the ladybug and rattlesnake can help you remember what to do when using scientific notation. Again, some of these questions, we if you watched the scientific notation introduction video or the scientific notation multiply and divide video, this last question has already been, um, we've already talked about it, but it's so important that I decided to put it on this one too. Uh, and that's, you know, how we adjust those numbers at the end uh, to put it in proper scientific notation. So what is scientific notation? As a review, oh, I keep typing. Okay, so scientific notation is a way of writing very large or very small numbers. A number is written in scientific notation when a number between zero, 1 and 10, excuse me, is multiplied by a power of 10. So every scientific notation number is going to have this coefficient on the left, and that number is going to be a number between 1 and 10. So it's like 1 point something or 2 point something or 3 point something, or it could just be a, a, you know, a 4 without all this decimal next to it. It could just be a whole number like that. Um, and it's also going to be multiplied by the second term, which is always a power of 10 with an exponent. Okay. And that's proper scientific notation. So here's an example of a very large number with all these zeros. And right here at the end is where that decimal is, right there after that last zero. And um, so if instead of writing all of this, we can convert it and just write this, which is the same number, but just written in scientific notation form. Same with very small numbers. All the, There's the decimal, all these zeros here. Uh, we can eliminate all those digits and just simplify that number by putting it into scientific notation. And we remember that large numbers in scientific notation greater than 1 is going to give us a positive exponent. And numbers less than 1, like this 0 .0000000 all the way to this, that's going to give us a negative exponent. Decimal point and place value. Scientific notation uses the movement of the decimal point as a way to change the number from expanded form into a number that is in scientific notation form. The decimal point in scientific notation always comes before the tenths place or just after the first non-zero digit. Now, uh, that's the first non-zero digit when you're reading that number from left to right, just like you would normally read the number. You always start on the left and go, well, that's 2,301, right? You, you read it that way, so your decimal needs to be just after that first non-zero digit there. And just before that tenths place, which is which would be that three after you put the decimal there. And then uh, here again, first digit um, or first non-zero digit is this two here. Ooh. And so when I move that decimal one, two, three, four, I'd have to move it five spaces to get it all the way from here to here. And that's uh, proper scientific notation would be just past this two in between that two and three. And then we would just drop all those extra zeros. Okay, so ladybug and rattlesnake. Um, we can use ladybug and rattlesnake to help us remember if the exponent is getting bigger or smaller, depending on which direction we move their decimal point. Uh, so if you move the decimal left, there we go. If you move the decimal left, then the exponent gets bigger. So remember left bigger, ladybug, LB, LB, right? If you move the decimal right, then the exponent gets smaller. And again, it gets smaller the same number of digits that you had to move that decimal. So if I move the decimal five to the right, that exponent's going to get smaller by five numbers, right? And then uh, right and snake, or right and smaller means rattlesnake or RS. So this is just a mnemonic device to help you uh, remember which um, direction that decimal is moving to make that exponent go bigger or smaller. Okay, so exponents of zero in scientific notation. The zero property of exponents tells us that when we have a number to the zero power, 
the answer is 1. And this is true for all scientific notation as well. So if I have 7.5 times 10 to the 0, I know 10 to the 0 just means a 1. So that would be like 7.5 times 1, which is just 7.5. Okay, same with this 4. 4 times 10 to the 0 is same as 4 times 1, which is 4. So if I were to give you a number like 4 or 6 or something, or let's say 8. Let's say I gave you the number 8. Here, let me change my pointer. I gave you this number 8, and I say turn it into scientific notation. Well, since that decimal is in the correct spot already, it's right there just past the 8. You can write it as 8.0 if you wanted to. You didn't have to, but um, but that's what that number is. It's 8.0 or just 8, right? So if you were to turn that into scientific notation, I'm going to turn my pen back on, um, I would just put it times 10 to the 0 because... I know that 10 to the 0 is a 1, and 8 times 1 is just an 8. So this is a way for us to turn numbers that don't necessarily need to be turned into scientific notation into scientific notation, because if you do that, it'll be, um, you can use that number with one of those really large or really small numbers that we need to convert into scientific notation. <clears throat> okay, so, so if you're ever asked to turn a number into scientific notation that already has the decimal in the correct place, the exponent is just going to be a 0. So here's how we need to add in scientific notation, okay? To add numbers in scientific notation, check to see if the exponents of both base tens are the same. If those exponents are not the same, uh, if they are the same, add the coefficients together first, then keep the existing common base 10 exponent in the answer. This is similar to when you add and subtract fractions. Maybe you guys have uh, re-watched those fraction videos that I put on Math Blossoms, where it talks about how you have to find that common denominator before you can add fractions together. Well, adding in scientific notation is kind of like that, where your exponent needs to be the same before you can add those coefficients together, okay? Uh, if it's not the same, you have to ladybug, uh, rattlesnake, adjust it so that it is the same exponent, and then you can add those coefficients together, okay? And the more practice you get with this, the easier it does get. But um, again, you can't just add, like for instance, in this first problem, I can't just add 6.02 plus the 3.14 yet, because this three and this two are not the same. I have to have a common exponent when I'm adding and subtraction subtracting. It's not like multiplying and dividing. And multiplying and dividing, you know, I would just add the exponents or subtract the exponents depending on if I'm multiplying or dividing. But when you're adding and subtracting, you have to have that common exponent. So notice here, they ladybug rattlesnaked this here. They moved that decimal to the left one and made that exponent bigger by one. Because remember, ladybug means left bigger. So they changed this second scientific notation number to read like this, okay? Now, technically, now it's not officially in scientific notation, but it's it's changed enough to where we can now have the same exponent in our base 10. Now that they're the same, you keep that exponent in your answer, and you just add those coefficients together. 6.02 plus uh, 0 0.314 gives us 6.334. And so that's our final answer. Now, at the end, if that decimal was not in the correct spot, we might need to ladybug and rattlesnake this again. Sometimes that happens where you have to ladybug. Oops, I did not mean to go back. Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes you have to adjust it to add them and then adjust it at the end again to get it back into proper scientific notation. So if that should happen to you, don't worry about that. That just, you know, sometimes happens when you're adding and subtracting uh, exponents. Adding and subtracting in scientific notation, uh, get the exponents the same before adding or subtracting. So here we have 5.30 times 10 to the third. We're adding it to the 6.0 times 10 to the 2. Again, we moved that decimal to the left one to make that exponent bigger by 1. And then we have that 10 to the 3 in our answer. And then 5.30 plus 0 0.60 is 5.90. All right, now let's look at some additional um, examples for adding in scientific notation. Uh, the first one, whoops. There we go, is 5.8 times 10 to the third plus 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so here we do not have the same exponent, okay? So we need to adjust the decimal so that the exponents are the same. In this case, I'm going to make my three 
a four. Okay. Now I could have made my four a three. There is, you know, you will end up with the right answer regardless if you change the first one or the second one. Okay. I just happen to change this three to a four. Okay. But again, if you wanted to change the four to a three, you can also do that as long as you're making those exponents match before you add, then you're okay. So we're going to adjust the decimal by moving this, uh, decimal on the 5.8 here to the left one, which makes our exponent go up by one to 10 to the fourth. So now I have 0.58 or 0 0.58 uh, times 10 to the fourth plus 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. Keep that common exponent and add those coefficients together and you'll get a 3.08. Adjust the decimal again if you need to, but in this case we did not need to because the decimal is in the correct spot. So we did not, we did not need to ladybug rattlesnake it a second time, okay? Uh, pay attention to those negatives in the exponents or in the coefficients. Integer rules uh, for addition may need to be applied. Okay, uh, it's always important to keep uh, pay attention to your signs anyway. Um, okay, so here's another example: 4.7 times 10 to the negative 2 plus 8 times 10 to the second. Again, um, we don't have the same exponents, but this time we have a negative 2 over here and a 2. So I had to adjust that decimal um, a lot more this time. So again, I changed my first one to two. So um, what's the distance between negative two and positive two? Well, let's look at a number line so we can kind of see this visually. Okay, so you've got a number line and you've got a zero here and a one and a two. So there's my one, there's my two. Oops. Okay. And then on the left side, we've got a negative one and then a negative two would be this next number in sequence here. Okay, so that's going to be that spot. Okay, so oh, let me make that negative more. Okay, so uh, again, the difference is if I want that negative two to be a two, let me change my colors here. I'm going to change, the, I'm going to move this and go one, two, three, four. That is four away from this negative two. Okay, four spaces to get from there to this positive two. Okay, that means I got to move that decimal four spaces left because I'm going bigger on my exponent. I'm trying to turn this negative two into a positive two. So I've got to move that decimal four spaces to the left. So if I start here at where the decimal is and I move it one and then four more spaces, that's going to give me three zeros here in front of this four. Okay, and then you can also add that zero at the beginning after the, the decimal. Um, but again, uh, it's, it's one, then two, three, four, four spaces, place your decimal there and then fill in those zeros. Okay. And so now we have the same exponent. So we can go ahead and add our coefficients, this one and this one together. And that's going to give us 8.00047. And then our 10 to the two, we just keep that as our, in our answer. And again, we did not need to adjust the decimal again at the end because it is in the proper spot. Here's our third example. We have negative 2.5 times 10 to the seventh and then nine times 10 to the sixth, okay? Again, we have two different exponents. We need to ladybug rattlesnake adjust this. And this time I'm gonna turn my seven into a six. So I'm going to go smaller. So that means I need to move my decimal to the right this time. So again, I'm moving it this way by one because that's going to make this seven a six. It's going to go smaller. Okay, so this time I didn't do ladybug. I did rattlesnake. And again, if I wanted to turn this one into seven instead of this one into a six exponent, that's perfectly fine. You'll end up with the same answer at the end. Okay, so now I've got negative 25 because when I move that decimal to the right, it turned that into a negative 25. Okay. Uh, times 10 to the 6 plus 9 times 10 to the 6. Add your coefficients, negative 25 plus 9. Keep those integer rules in your head. Um, and negative 25 plus 9 is a negative 16. Okay, so end up with negative 16 times that common exponent on your base 10. And so I end up with this answer. Now here's an example where, you know, our decimal is still not in the right spot. It is here after the 6. And I need it to be here just past that first non-zero digit. So I've got a ladybug rattlesnake adjust this one a second time to make that negative 1.6. Now my decimal's in the right spot, but since I moved it left, my exponent gets bigger and it becomes a seven, OK? 
Okay. So sometimes that happens where you end up having to adjust it twice. And sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on which one you change at the beginning, really. And it varies from problem to problem. Ladybug rattlesnake adjustments are not always needed. But they sometimes are. Okay. Now we have some examples of subtracting in scientific notation. So let's look at this. I know this looks like a lot of words, but a lot of this is stuff you've heard before and I'm just repeating it. So it's more like review. Um, okay, so we have uh, to subtract numbers in scientific notation, check to see if the exponents of both base tens are the same. If they are the same, subtract the coefficients together, keep the existing common base 10 exponent in the answer. If the exponents of both the base tens are not the same, you will need to move the decimal of either one of them in order to change it so that both exponents are the same. So ladybug rattlesnake that to make those exponents the same if they're not already the same. Once the exponents are the same, then you can subtract the coefficients and keep the matching exponent on the base 10 in your answer. Lastly, you may need to adjust the decimal point at the very end if it isn't in the correct place for scientific notation. Use the ladybug rattlesnake to help you adjust the decimal if you need it. So this is really the same as adding it's just we are uh, going to be subtracting those coefficients instead of adding them. Okay, so the process is the same as what we just did. So if you look at some of these examples, we have 4.23 times 10 to the 3 minus uh, 9.56 times 10 to the second. Uh, again, we had to change. Uh, I changed this first one here um, to 42.3 by going right on my decimal and turning my three into a two exponent. And I adjusted that with a rattlesnake so that it would have the same matching exponents as this one. So now they both have a 10 to the two. And now I can just go ahead and subtract 42.3 minus 9.56 is 32.74. I end up with that as my answer um, and keep that common exponent in your answer. But then my decimal is not in the right spot for scientific notation. So this is one of those where I had to ladybug rattlesnake it again to get my decimal in the right spot. So I moved my decimal left one, and so my exponent went up by one, and that became 3.274 times 10 to the third. Our second example, seven times 10 to the fifth, um, uh, minus 5.2 times 10 to the fourth. And again, I needed to move that decimal. This time I moved the second term, and I moved it to the left one, which made that exponent bigger, ladybug left bigger, and that turned it into 0.52 times 10 to the fifth. And now my 10 to the five matches this 10 to the five. So I can go ahead and subtract my coefficients, seven minus 0.52, which gives me 6.48. And I keep that 10 to the fifth in my final answer. And since my decimal's in the correct spot, I did not need to ladybug uh, rattlesnake adjust it again. Okay, let's look at some more examples of sci uh, subtracting in scientific notation. Uh, we have a 5.8 times 10 to the fourth minus 2.5 times 10 to the third. Adjust that decimal so the exponents are the same first. So I, at this time I turned my four exponent into a three by moving that decimal left one. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, right one. And I ended up with 58 times 10 to the third. Remember, right smaller on the exponent. So I went smaller on the exponent, moved the decimal right. 58 minus 2.5 gives us this 55.5, okay? And then we keep that 10 to the third now in our final answer after we adjusted that to make those match. And then uh, since we have 55.5 in our answer and we need that decimal to be between this first five and the second five, we need to move that decimal left and make that exponent bigger by one. And that's why we ended up with 5.55 times 10 to the fourth as our final answer. Okay, the second example here, we have 4.7 times 10 to the negative 2 minus 8 times 10 to the positive 2. And again, we have to adjust the decimal so that the exponents are the same. So we're going to take this and we're going to move that decimal left, making that negative 2 bigger four times. That's going to give me these three zeros in front of this four. And that's where my decimal goes, right after that three zero. So again, it's four spaces. I had to move it left to make this four bigger so that that could be a positive 2, and that's a positive 2, okay? Uh, now I can subtract, and this time when I subtract all of this minus the 8, I get a negative number, negative 7.99953, um, and we again, we keep our common exponent in our answer, but since um, 
the decimal is in the correct spot, I did not need to ladybug rattlesnake adjust it again. And so this is just an example where sometimes you will end up with a negative coefficient and that's okay. And then here's a third example, 2.5, or excuse me, negative 2.5 times 10 to the seventh minus nine times 10 to the sixth. So adjust that decimal so the exponents are the same. This time I adjusted this decimal here on the negative number. I moved it to the uh, right one, which made my exponent uh, go down or get smaller by one. And so now they match. I have 10 to the third or 10 to the six, excuse me, on the left and 10 to the six on the right now. So my negative 25 instead of negative 2.5, my negative 25 minus nine gives me a negative 34. Remember when we subtract a, a positive from a negative like this, it's keep change change. So I'm really adding a negative nine to this negative 25. Okay. So negative 34 times 10 to the six, we kept that common exponent. And then we had to adjust the decimal. The decimal is just past the four. We need to move it to the left one, which makes our decimal go up, or excuse me, our exponent go up by one. And uh, that's our final answer, a negative 3.4 times 10 to the seventh. Ladybug rattlesnake adjustments are not always needed. Okay, so now it's your turn to try and grow a blossom, okay? So hopefully you've practiced uh, the conversions of scientific notation, You've practiced multiplying and dividing them, and now you're ready to tackle some addition and subtraction problems. So I'm going to ask you to pause, and I will count to three. One, two, three. Okay, so the first answer is six times 10 to the fifth. This one was a relatively simple one because the exponents on the base 10 terms have already uh, matched. So they've already got the same exponent. So all you had to do is add that four plus two. Keep that common exponent. The second problem, uh, this time we had 7.5 times 10 to the second plus 1.5 times 10 to the fourth. We needed to convert this uh, one of these so that they would match. I converted the uh, 7.5 by moving that decimal place to the left twice. And when I moved that decimal to the left twice, I had to fill in a zero here. And then uh, I ended up with 0 0.075 times 10 to the fourth. Then I could have added it to the second term. Keep that common exponent. And 0 0.075 plus 1.5 is 1.575. So this is our final answer here at the end. Okay, now we're going to do some subtraction problems. So go ahead and pause and I'll count to three. One, two, three. All right, so here's our answer for the next one. <clears throat> we have six times 10 to the third. Again, the exponents already matched, so we could just keep that common exponent. And then eight minus two gives us a six. The second problem, we did have to convert. And this time I converted the 7.5 so that that exponent would reduce to a two instead of a four. So I had to move the decimal one, two, and then fill in that extra spot with a zero, making that 750 times 10 to the two. Now that the exponents match, I can add the 750 plus the 1.5, and I get 751.5 times 10 to the two. Uh, the last step, since my decimal is not in the correct spot, I had to move it to the left twice, and left means bigger on the exponent by two, so that's how I got 7.515 times 10 to the fourth, which is our final answer. Okay, let's try a third blossom. Okay, go ahead and pause. One, two, three. Okay, so here we have uh, 3.4 times 10 to the negative two plus 5.2 times 10 to the negative three. In this situation, um, I only needed to convert, uh, move that decimal one spot. Okay, so since I want this negative two to be a negative three, that means I need to go smaller because negative three is smaller than negative two, even though it doesn't look like it, it is. So uh, I move the decimal right, and that makes this go smaller by one, which makes that 34 times 10 to the negative three. Keep that negative three <clears throat> in your answer. Oops, see. All right, so I changed this because uh, the, I noticed a typo on it. Okay, so we have 34 times 10 to the negative three, and we had to adjust that, um, that number up here to make these exponents match. So again, I move the decimal right to make this exponent smaller. Okay, so then I add my 34 to my 5.2, I end up with 39.2, keeping that common exponent. 
And then since my decimal is not in the right spot, I had to move it left, which made my exponent go up or get bigger by one. And one bigger than negative three is negative two. Okay, the next one, we have 8.7 times 10 to the negative one plus 2.7 times 10 to the positive one. Uh, I had to move that decimal to make this negative one a positive one. So I had to move that decimal one, two spaces, and then add a zero there in the space that didn't have a number. Then we can add our coefficients now that our exponents are matching. And 0 0.087 plus 2.7 gives us 2.787 times 10 to the first. Okay, so here's our fourth try and grow a blossom. Go ahead and try to do these subtraction problems. Pause. One, two, three. Okay, so here we had 4.3. Um, oh, that should be 4.5. Oh, let me fix that. All right, so here's the proper answer. Okay, so it's 4.5 times 10 to the 3. Again, um, we need a matching exponent. This time I decided to move the second term exponent. Again, it doesn't matter which one you change as long as um, you match those exponents. So I changed this positive 9 uh, to uh, 0. 0.00009. I moved that decimal point five spaces left. And when I did that, it made my exponent go five spaces bigger. And that's going to turn that negative two into a positive three. Okay. So now that I have matching exponents, I can subtract 4.5 minus 0. 0.00009 gives us 4.49991. And our common exponent is the three. Second one, I've got 8.7 times 10 to the negative five. I, I want to convert that so that it is a negative three so it can match the second term. And so I moved my decimal to the left one, two spaces to make that negative five and negative three because I know that two spaces left means I go bigger on the exponent and negative three is bigger than negative five. Okay. Uh, now that they match, I just basically subtract. And when I subtract 0.87 minus 2.7, I get a negative answer and that's okay. Sometimes that happens. Um, and then our exponent is also still negative three. All right, so let's pause and answer the ascent question. Okay, so go ahead and try to answer this uh, on your own. And if it, it's okay if you use your own words, uh, but uh, try to explain how we add those scientific notations. Like what do you need to do to add those? One, two, three. Okay, so what I have on here is that to add those numbers in scientific notation, check to see if the exponents of both the base tens are the same. If they are the same, just add the coefficients together first and keep the existing common base 10 exponent in the answer. If the exponents of both the bases are not the same, you'll need to move that decimal of either one of them in order to change it so that both exponents are the same. And once the exponents are the same, add those coefficients and keep the matching exponent on the base 10 in your answer. Lastly, you may need to adjust the decimal point at the very end if it has a, if it's not in the correct space for scientific notation. Use that ladybug rattlesnake to help you if you need it. Okay, number two, how do you subtract numbers that are in scientific notation without having to convert it to expanded form first? So how are you subtracting scientific notations? Again, write it in your own words if you can. Pause. One, two, three. To subtract numbers in scientific notation, check to see if the exponents of both base tens are the same. If they're the same, subtract the coefficients together first and keep those existing common base 10 exponents in the answer. If the exponents of both the base tens are not the same, you will need to move that decimal of either one of them in order to change it so that both exponents are the same. Use that ladybug rattlesnake for that. And then once the exponents are the same, subtract the coefficients, keep that matching exponent base 10 in your answer. Lastly, you may need to adjust that decimal point one last time using that ladybug rattlesnake. And then number three, go ahead and pause and try to answer how does ladybug rattlesnake help you remember what to do when using scientific notation? One, two, three. Okay, so we can use ladybugs and rattlesnakes to help us remember if the exponent gets bigger or smaller, depending on which direction we move our decimal when we work with it. So we have uh, moving the decimal left 
makes the exponent get bigger, left bigger ladybug. And then moving that decimal right makes our exponent get smaller, right smaller or rattlesnake. Yay, we're at our vocabulary and this awesome, cute little gorilla is looking at his favorite blossom right now. Uh, scientific notation, those numbers that are very large and very small that we use um, this notation to uh, shorten the number of digits in those very large or very small numbers. Uh, exponents are those numbers that tell us how many times multiply a number times itself, also called powers. And then base tens are the uh, number, a base is a number that the ex exponent is attached to. In scientific notation, we use base 10. So it'd be 10 to the exponent or to the power of five, you know, whatever we're using. Coefficients are those numbers that you multiply times the base 10 in scientific notation. In equations, it also means um, uh, a number being multiplied times a variable. And then expanded form is the number written out with all of its digits, okay? Not scientific notation. So if I've got, you know, a hundred digit number, expanded form is going to write all those digits down, whereas scientific notation will be a lot shorter for that number. Uh, convert is when we change. Convert means change. So we do often convert <clears throat> expanded form into scientific notation and scientific notation back into expanded form sometimes. Decimal point is that number that separates our whole numbers on the left from the partial numbers or numbers less than one on the right. Negative positive integers, negative and positive. Negative means less than one on a number line and positive means greater than, uh, a, sorry, negative is less than um, zero and positive is greater than zero. And then integers include all whole numbers, positive and negative, including zero. But zero does not have a sign. Zero is neither positive or negative. Sum is the answer we get when we add numbers together. And then difference is those numbers we get when we subtract numbers. Bye, Gorilla. Okay, great work. A bouquet of math blossoms have opened up in your mind today. So to further improve your math language skills, remember to practice. Study 10 minutes daily. Ask for help if you need it. Learn from all of your mistakes and always try. I'm Ms. G. Thank you for watching this Math Blossoms video on adding and subtracting scientific notation. The next video in the series is adding and subtract, or excuse me, workable word problems in scientific notation. So uh, definitely join me for that one. And uh, it was lovely. Oh, now it's time for me to say it was lovely teaching you math today. Bye.